Welcome back to Let's Play Fable 2. Oh, those are words I've wanted to say for years. Last time, we discovered that we are a hero. Something much rarer these days in Albion. Uh, worth noting is that we do have some clothing slash armor available to us in the lower class set. Mingle with the rabble with this cheap slum dweller outfit. This grimy and ill-fitting top will probably fill you with a great terrible rash. A patchy and unflattering skirt. Not ideal for going to balls, dinner parties, or respectable streets. Held together with dirt and rather uncomfortable. This game really makes you start out crappy. In more ways than just seeing your practical sister die. You're like gutter class. You have nothing to your name. The first game at least started you with a weapon. And we do have our main quest. Um, jobs are mini games that I'll get into later. Sales actually track what NPC merchants have sales. Uh, families, you keep track of your family, and regions are region maps. Uh, what's it want me to look at? Oh, that's what the lack of uh, items looks like, I guess. I'm really not sure what it wants me to look at in the clothing tab. Yeah, the menu is much easier to navigate in this game than in the first. So last time, the seer told us to go check the chest next to our mobile home. <laughs> Um, let's see. Immediately, you can see that you can actually buy and, um, rent out homes from the start. This caravan has seen better days, but it's also seen worse days. The day it's seeing right now, therefore, falls somewhere in the middle. Yeah, there are way more factors that come into the price of things. Um, how rich the town is, if there are people there people's general opinion of you, how decorated it is. Again, this is Fable 1 on crack. Um, I am going to refer to this as the... I don't know what I can call this area because it's kind of, the G word is kind of a slur, but it's gone on so long that people forget that it's one. But to say Romani is simply incorrect because this is a fantasy realm. So when I do refer to the map name and the town, I'm not meaning it in the slur way, but I understand that the word does have negative connotations. Also, there are tons more NPCs on one map at once in this game. Look at this! Even this is as much as you would see in Bow Lower Bowerstone. Let's see. This is your caravan. You can sleep here for extra bonuses, and it will act as a marshal home if you marry. Um, how can I check the bonuses? Uh, use. Bonuses. Animal magnetism. 
Uh, can I see you? Uh, there's no description of what it does. Uh, let me look it up. Uh, I do want to go ahead and be able to say what things do. So, Fable to Animal Magnetism. Okay, it makes you, it gives you a minor bonus to your attractiveness stat for if you're trying to court people. A rusty longsword. A rudimentary weapon that is more commonly wielded by poor farmers desperate to protect their harvest from hobs than it is by warriors. A light splintered crossbow. It's not the best constructed crossbow ever made, and it's slow and clunky compared to modern firearms, but it's still better than a spitball shooter. A placebo health potion. It makes you feel better, plus it tastes like sugar. As weak as health potions come. There are tiers to potions in this game. No longer do you have, like, potion, only potions that are ridiculously powerful. Dog elixir. This pungent potion will clear... Cure all your dog's wounds. It will also keep his coat shiny, his nose cool, and his breath smelling like daisies. Collar of Holding. Effectively binds your dog to, well, the collar itself, using ancient magic. Use the collar in your inventory to put it on your dog. This also allows you to rename him any time you want. A Spade. An ordinary garden variety spade, allowing you to dig up all manner of buried items. So we got some basic... Wow, people are afraid of me because I have weapons now. So, we are given some basic adventuring gear. Because our goal now is to hunt down that bastard Lucian. Um, is there anything else? No. Now come with me. Okay, so the game isn't hiding that it's Teresa. Even if I weren't using subtitles. That's good to know. So it wasn't really spoilery. Take this. Bower Lake Tomb Seal. A strange dark seal which fits the Bower Lake Tomb door. It's a guild seal. It is a powerful artifact, the kind of which all heroes once carried. It will grant you access to places others cannot go. It will also allow me to talk to you when necessary. Now, look down. map compared to the maps in Fable 1. This game is so big and open and it's just Fable but more and improved. <laughs> I am going to gush over this game. Oh. Um. How do... Oh yeah, you can actually access all of your um, things here if you hit right bumper. Um, da, 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 da. Option. Control. I can't see my controls. Um... I'm trying to hit that thing, and there is a reason, but I don't think I'm actually able to aim yet. Oh. Yeah, your dog can actually sniff out treasure, which means that they can just hide treasures wherever, and it's not terrible. 
Um, your dog can actually find treasures specifically that make him better at finding other treasures, too. A rubber ball. All dogs know humans are ignorant as to the true value of these precious items, which they discard seemingly at random. According to ancient pet lore, the dog deity canine killed his brother Fable to gain possession of his rubber ball. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, we do have achievements for this game, of course. I, I won't be going for a thousand gamer score on this game, just like I didn't go for all achievements on the previous. Uh, but look at how... For a 360 game, this is beautiful. A 360 game trying to look realistic. Let's see, I think I saw a chest up here. Yeah. A money bag. A bag containing a hundred gold. It's hard, it's shiny, and it makes life easier. It's gold. Spend it, hoard it, or give it away. Just don't put it in your mouth. You'd never know where it's been. Especially in Fable. Um. Yeah. Maybe aiming is a hero thing. Look at the water! You can swim! You can swim in this game! I'm even more amazed by this game now that I've played the first one all the way through. And we have our first silver key out here. These rare silver keys can be used to open magically locked chests all over the world. Each chest requires a certain number of keys to open, so always be on the lookout for more. You never know when you'll f what you'll find inside a silver key chest. I am totally going to fanboy over this game, by the way. Don't be alarmed. I'm speaking to you through the guild seal. You will need to jump into that hole to continue. Don't worry. The water at the bottom will break your okay. fall. I guess he's not going to fetch. An old flooded ruin. Um, is there anything in here? I'm not going to go for all treasure in this game, just because that would be silly and kind of grindy. Just going over every map after maxing out the dog's um, searching skills, although this is an obvious dig spot. Wait, I can probably... Okay, it's not an expression in this game. Really? 
Huh. I guess I don't want to hide away too many dig spots this early in the... That was a good jump. You can actually, like, see the experience game. Ugh. <laughs> Those green orbs hold the knowledge and experience of the creatures that you kill. It is strange that they switched the... Oh, another silver key. Cool. It is weird that they switched the color of strength and will experience in this game, though. You're not really going to be finding a whole lot of... Um, bows in this game. I think it's all crossbows and um, firearms. It's not a spoiler to say firearms because Lucian used some or one. Amethyst. An inexpensive but lovely gem. It was said to be a favorite among Old Kingdom maidens, but the recent discovery of large deposits has lowered its value. Yeah, this game talks m way more about the Old Kingdom. In the first game, it was mostly in the context of the Sword of Aeons. Um, you will have noticed that we gained an outstanding fight bonus to experience. Instead of um, a combat multiplier in this game, it you get a multiplier based on your um, performance in a battle. So if you take less hits, end it more quickly, etc. I'm not sure of the exact criteria. Rusty Mace. As crude and ugly as it is effective, one can imagine this mace being wielded by the very first men to walk upon this world. This is more powerful than a normal weapon. Much slower. But, while we're just dealing with wasps, there is no need. Also, I believe that the more fights in a row you get a high multiplier, the higher it goes. I'm not sure on that, I could be misremembering. Yeah, I'm specifically not using the trail because I don't think it really suits the game very well. Brendan's Diary. This appears to be a page from an explorer's diary, recording the details of an ex expedition into this cave. Third day. My hand is shaking from exhaustion, but I must remain vigilant. I almost nodded off, off last night as we camped around the fire, but still managed to keep an eye on Eric and Drake. I have seen the greedy glimmer in their eyes. They mean to take the treasure th to make the treasures th the treasure theirs. Perhaps it's perhaps it's time to make use of the poison. Brendan. Eric's letter. This unposted letter was written by an expedi a member of an expedition of treasure hunters. Dearest Harriet, our voyage into the entrails of Bower Lake has taken a turn for the worse. I only hope to su I survive to see daylight again. You were right about Brendan and Drake. They're selfish brutes, conspiring behind my back, plotting my murder so they can keep the treasure for themselves. But fear not, my love, for I plan to poison their water supplies while they sleep. Soon we shall be rich. Be virtually yours, Eric. I 
think this is the way we are, air quotes, supposed to go. Uh, let's see. There ought to be something else, I thought. I guess I was remembering wrong. My memory of this game is admittedly hazy. Drake's suicide note. On this tattered piece of paper are the last words of one Drake Morton, explorer and treasure hunter. A man can only be pushed so far before he breaks. Five nights without sleep while those villains schemed behind my back, losing a foot to a giant beetle, that never-ending attack of hiccups. Well, it was all worth it, for I found it. Yes, the treasure is mine. Who knows what great hero made use of this magical gem? All I know is that neither Brendan nor Eric will ever get their hands on it. I'm planning to poison them both tonight. Then I'm throwing the gem into the lake and poisoning myself, too, just in case. Nobody makes a fool out of Drake Morton. Interesting. There's a gem in the lake. Oh, this game has diving spots instead of, um... fishing spots. Now I remember. A bewitching augment. This is a magical augment which will make you more attractive without the need for cosmetic surgery. To gain its benefits, attach the augment to a weapon with empty augment slots. Much like the first game, you'll find augments, but because this game is the first game on crack, there are way more for way more stats. Like that beguiling one. The pile of stone looks like it should have been something. Um, if I remember correctly... Oh yeah, you can't even accidentally claim experience in this game. But, uh, you're gonna be more versatile just via gameplay in this one, whereas before you could get by just doing melee or range or magic. Here, every combat style has situations where they're better. Those green orbs hold the knowledge and experience of the creatures that you kill. I should note that because this system cannot uh, run or cannot connect to the internet, um, I am playing on version 1.0 of, th of the game. Um, if it turns out to be a problem, then I will use the other 360 long story to update it but for now. Interesting, a bookshelf. I thought this would be the side path, but... Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's definitely where we need to go. Barrels to smash, and a chest to loot. It truly is Fable, or Diablo. A pouch containing another hundred gold. Oh, I wouldn't even, even check back here. Good boy. Yeah, they definitely boosted the responsiveness of the game in updates. Also, look how tiny our health bar is. It's adorable. Children's health potion. Tastes like cherries mixed with turpentine for your owie level injuries. A two-star health potion. As indicated by the icon in the corner. The Hero of Oakvale. This is one of the many books hit written about the Hero of Oakvale, who defeated the dreaded Jack of Blades. Although there are many conflicting reports regarding the hero's life and his feats, all accounts agree that he wielded the ancient, the legendary Sword of Aeons against Jack and slew him twice, once in Jack's human state and once again in the form of a dragon. Among his many other accomplishments are his victory in the Witchwood Arena, the slaying of the White Balverine, and the freeing of the Prophets of the Fireheart. Although any official records of his possible offspring would have been destroyed in the civilian attack on the Heroes Guild, it's believed that his bloodline continued, and that one day a new hero will emerge to save Albion in its time of need. Yeah, so people were really getting distrustful of heroes, so they actually torched the guild. We didn't slit the White Balverine, though, is the weird thing. We... did we? I swear we really just drove it off, but I could be remembering wrong. It's been a while. Not as long as since I've played this game last, but... Yeah, that's the hero from the first game. Beyond these broken doors lies the hero's guild. For centuries, this academy trained the most supremely gifted sons and daughters of Albion, bound together by the blood that flowed in their veins. Once worshipped by the people of Albion, the great heroes came to be feared and hated. No man alive today remembers the night the guild burned, and now it lies forgotten. But the heroes are not all gone. You are here, and that same heroic blood flows through you. Look around at these walls. Your forebear, one of the mightiest heroes who ever lived. At a young age, he suffered a devastating loss, from which he never truly recovered. But when the world tried to crush him, he fought back. He grew strong, strong enough to reshape the world as he saw fit. You must do the same. The guild has reacted to you. Step into the light. Learn the true power of heroes. Your blood is awakening. You can now channel the experience you have collected into strength, skill, or will. Strength improves combat with hand-to-hand -hand weapons. Skill allows you to shoot faster and with greater accuracy. Will gives you control over the forces of magic. Before you is a colors gate. It reacts to the will of one who seeks to use it. You have not been able to use will yet, but the simple act of reaching this place has given you will experience. You need to learn a will ability to activate the colors gate. You now can level up at any time in this game. To better yourself in strength, skill, and will. You don't have to go to a single location in order to channel your experience. You can do it from anywhere. This alone is a huge quality of life improvement. Shock stuns your enemies and blasts them with lightning. Inferno 
calls forth magical flames to scorch and burn your foes. Time control allows you to slow the world around you or to move with incredible speed. Blades creates magical swords to impale your enemies. Vortex creates a powerful windstorm that will pummel your enemies with nearby debris or even other enemies. Chaos confuses your foes, making them unpredictable. They may flee, attack their fellows, or even fall in love with you. Force Push sends a blast of energy towards your enemies, hurling them into nearby objects. It is very effective in confined spaces. Raise Dead causes the bones of the recently deceased to rise and fight for you. The spells are a, a bit more simple than in the first game. They got rid of the really OP ones like multi-hit and or multi-strike and multi-arrow. But I think force push is good enough for us. You've learned the force, pu force push force spell. Force push sends a blast of energy towards your enemies, hurling them into nearby objects. It is very effective in confined spaces. And here you can see how much learning level two costs. Can you feel the power coursing through you? It is only the beginning. Use your will ability to hit the flit switch and power up the gate. Uh, I forget how Once to do the ancestor stuff. It will allow you to travel back to Bower Lake. Let me look this up real quick. Oh, so there is actually a mini game apparently that you do that gets you a lion head tattoo, a hero doll, a chicken suit item, demonstrate your will, destroy the flip switch, a pink die, and a expression book. Uh, none of that is important to me, but I will go ahead and see if that's still available. In your journey, use the colors gate. Use your newfound abilities to defeat them. Let's level up. So you actually have some unlock special moves for use in close combat. The brutal style skill actually learns helps you learn flourishes, blocking, counter attacks, and chain attacks. Let's learn that just to unlock blocking. So you hold X to do it. You can't roll in this game, to my knowledge. But uh yeah. Next time on Let's Play Fable 2, we're heading back to Bowerstone. See you guys then. Well, actually, no. We're going to explore more of the Bower Lake. And do some adventuring around here. Find some treasure. Maybe find quests. See you guys then.